Today we have a resurrection story. Presenting the 5.56 AK Niner. Hello and welcome to Nine Hole Reviews. This is a story of what we have nicknamed the AK Niner for its nine lives and its permanent residency with Nine Hole Reviews. A rifle that came barely functioning, sold for $200, but now currently stands as one of the most reliable, softest shooting, compact, and most quietly suppressible carbines in possession. While working in Central and Eastern Europe, I came across reports of men along the NATO border area with suspected 5.56 caliber AK-100 series rifles, with the newest Russian special operations equipment, whom according to Russian officials were quote, not Russian soldiers, and they evidently had no idea who they were. Some suggested that these groups used 5.56 rifles because if they somehow wandered across NATO lines, 5.56 ammunition storages were much easier to find and the found 5.56 casings, if they were to use them, would raise less suspicion. While the idea of using indigenous ammunition supplies is not a new idea by any means, a reliable, combat accurate and suppressible Kalashnikov rifle that consumed 5.56 ammunition would certainly be an interesting pursuit for any enthusiast living in the heart of the US. The AK-9 started its life as a Russian imported Saiga 223 caliber sporting rifle. The base rifle's quality was superb. It came from the Ishmash factory in Russia and was manufactured under the Kalashnikov concern and had an unusual heavy profile cold hammer forged chrome line barrel. Prior to her possession, the previous user had made a litany of modifications. This was the mid 2000s and Saiga rifles were cheap and he apparently wanted a Galil instead of an AK. The rifle came installed with an aftermarket Tapco Galil profile handguard with a handguard retainer, a bullet guide to feed with regular 5.56 magazines, and an ace folder stock. One of the best modifications from the previous user was that he riveted a Galil magazine release. Magazines now could be released by the tip of the index finger and are near drop free. Unfortunately, there were many horrible modifications that we had to fix. The previous owner had fitted a very limited production aftermarket AK-102 styled gas block on it. The gas block was installed crooked and the pins were drilled at a 30 degree angle, making disassembly an absolute nightmare. He cut the barrel down to 14 and a half inches. We presume that since a gas block pin job was so horrible, he couldn't access the gas port to enlarge it to compensate for the decreased dwell time and therefore induced under gas misfeeds. Our primary objective was to make the rifle function again. Then more importantly, squeeze as much performance out of it and make it suppressor friendly. We installed a slick ALG AK trigger with a smooth, flat-faced 2-pound trigger pull and retained a Saiga bolt lock open function. We then swapped the handguard back to an AK100 series polymer grip with an Ultimat gas tube top rail for any potential accessories in the future. The stock folds to the right side like an FNFAL paratrooper, so the scope does not need to be removed, but the rifle could still be fired while folded. And finally, we added a namepoint PRO red dot with an RS regulate side rail mount. I was able to enlarge a gas port with a drill press to where a barely cycled Russian lacquered ammunition. And finally, I sent the rifle off to Mike Kramer. Mike is a former US Army Cavalry officer who turned into a gunsmith and has a reputation of fixing unfixable rifles. To access a gas port, I had to cut the gas block pins to release it for work. Mike had the unfortunate pleasure of re-welding, reshaping and re-pinning the gas block with the standard 24mm threads removed to make way for a secret ingredient. The Mark 12 series of rifles are known for how quiet their suppressors are. Money. When I wanted this rifle to take the same type of suppressor that my Mark 12 used, I spoke with Ron Allen from Allen Engineering to see if we could custom manufacture a collar system to fit my Mark 12's AEM-5 suppressor on. By fitting the AEM-5 suppressor to the rifle, my overall length would be comparable to a suppressed short-barreled AK-102, 
but push an extra few inches of pressure that a 14.5 inch barrel had to offer and still substantially be quieter than most 556 suppressor designs. On the close range, the ALG trigger in combination with either the muzzle brake or the suppressor with tuned gas settings helps keep the recoil extremely low without any reliability issues. There's a little bit of vertical stringing that's taking place here. My rounds are climbing, but that's me ripping the shots as quickly as I can take the shots. And so that's, that's the recoil that you're seeing in a you know, 12-15 round string. And since the muzzle brake is pinned, the overall length of the barrel is greater than 16.1 inches, which means in the US it does not require complicated NFA paperwork. Let's see the 9-hole accuracy tests. We tested this with 55 grain Fiocchi ball ammunition. At 100 yards we clocked 9 rounds from this rifle at 4.55 inches with about 80% of the shots in a 2.279 inch cluster using the aim point red dot in a 200 yard zero. We recorded quick and reliable hits out to 350 yards and actually were able to stretch the Niner's impacts all the way out to 500 yards on the practical accuracy course. One of the only remaining weaknesses that we can think of is a lack of 5.56 Kalashnikov magazines in the US. Despite the AK-9 or not being an off-the-shelf variant of the AK-100 series, we felt that the versatility and performance of our creation could potentially be a blueprint for your inspiration in yielding a performance Kalashnikov. Let us know if you'd be interested in working on a project similar to this one. In the meantime, thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you at the range. Two, one big door, two packs, Raycon one, over.